Hello, hello, my heathens. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another color and chat video. Thank you to my YouTube subscribers for voting on which coloring book I was going to color for this color and chat. It was between, which ones was it between? <laughs> Was it Retro Deco, Retro Deco, and Eerie Patisserie? Is that what, what, it, it doesn't matter. You guys voted for Eerie Patisserie. So Eerie Patisserie, it is going to be, it has been quite a flaming minute since I've colored in this book. Why? I don't know. It's just been a while. So let's get into it. I have already started by laying down just one quick base color and I thought that today since we are still on my let's use up all of my markers in my set little since we're still on that adventure I thought Let's further complicate the situation by making today one of my let's play with ugly colors situation. So this is the color palette that we are going to play with. Now I have to say that the set of markers that I'm working through is my set of Cali Art markers, which are these. But last year, I was sent another set of inexpensive alcohol markers. The Cali Art markers I purchased outright myself years ago. But last year, uh, a company reached out to me by the name of Chalky Crown. They are a private label, budget, children's art supply company, I suppose they could be classified as. They didn't give me a whole lot of inf information. It was just, hey, do you want some free markers in exchange for an illustration? On Instagram an illustration post on Instagram and I said sure okay so they sent me these markers the video is by the way up on YouTube they did not require that I make a video for them I just decided this was a good opportunity for me to talk about alcohol markers so I made a video so long story longer um, I am attempting to go through my entire set of Cali art markers but today we are, as I said, further complicating the situation because I pulled out one of the Chalky Crown markers as well. And I also pulled out three of these ancient Prismacolor markers that I have had since high school. So these have been going strong for ages and they no longer even make this style of marker anymore. The Prismacolor still exists, but the tip is different. Now there is a, um, this is an ultra fine tip, which is awful. It was always awful. It dried out and was just bad. Um, they've since moved on to a much more efficient and better fine tip. And the stickers are different, the labels. That's how old these are. But I'm fully in let's play with ugly colors mode. So I had to, I had to dip into several sets of markers. To get the colors that I was looking for. Okay, so the color palette that we are going to play with, if you couldn't already tell, is god-awfully disgusting, and that's what's going to make it fun. So today, I'm going to encourage you to play with some ugly colors. Go through your marker sets, and I'm going to say limit yourself to three to five colors at maximum. So pick three to five hideous colors. That is not going to include any of the accent markers, by the way, because if you know me, you know that I am going to be adding most likely gel pen, possibly glitter, all of that. But play with ugly colors. Go get your supplies if you're going to be coloring with me today or if you are if you're listening to this while you're busying yourself doing other things and you plan to come back to this later and rewatch it to color with me, well then keep it in mind. Choose some hideous colors and let's do it. So this is the color palette that we're playing with. 
Is it going to work? Is it not going to work? I don't know, but that's the fun of it. I am giving you, if you are timid, if you're afraid, if you feel as though you are committing a cardinal sin by intentionally ruining your books, I am here to be your bad influence. I am here to be your enabler. I am here to give you permission to destroy your books. Use my books as your excuse to experiment, to make unholy messes, and to play. That's what my books are for. Use them for that. Mm. I brushed my teeth and I'm drinking lemon water and coffee concurrently. Not a good flavor. I do enjoy herbal medicinal flavors, really strong herbal teas. I enjoy certain cough drops and cough syrups. But this tastes like acid. Mm. Okay. Unsweetened coffee and unsweetened lemon water. So just, mm. okay. Let us jump in. I mean, technically I already have, but how is everyone doing? Summer is upon us here in the Northern Hemisphere. Ooh, let me know wherever you are in the world, if you are one of my international subscribers. What's the weather like where you are? I am curious because today, don't hate me, I don't know my Fahrenheit to Celsius conversions, but this is going to be our first full week out here in the desert where I live of triple digit temperatures. And not just a nice calm 101, 102, I'm talking 115, 116, 118 degrees. Yeah, it's gonna be nasty. And I unfortunately have to go out into the world in this weather during daylight hours. I have Oh, thank God. I have a hair appointment. I am finally, finally going to have a haircut. I am long overdue. I am not the greatest at maintaining a bob hairstyle. A bob hairstyle is supposed to be cut about once a month and I typically go about two months before I actually get around to making an appointment and cutting it and March, April, May, June I have gone four months you all four months that is grotesque negligence so I think what I'm going to do is when I see my hairstylist this week I am going to before I leave I'm going to make an appointment for my follow-up haircut before I even leave the door so we'll see how that goes and I also oh this this is, is really crappy two days later two is it two days later or three days later whatever the case I wait I said that in reverse this week, I am getting my second Pokey Poke, which I am not looking forward to because from what I understand, it is absolutely hellish. So I'm going to get my second Pokey Poke, and then a few days later, I get to go sit in the chair and have my hair cut. And both of these little excursions of mine are going to be undertaken in the middle of the day, in the triple digit temperatures. So this vampire must leave the bat cave in the heat. Sweat. You guys know how I feel about sweat. So thankfully, I live in a small town, so I don't have to drive far. But that's not much of a consolation considering that it, if I step outside the door and I park my car for five to ten minutes, it becomes a broiler. So not looking forward to either of those things but I am looking forward to finally getting my hair cut and feeling a bit more like myself. It's looking hideous, but it's working for me for some bizarre reason. These, my, <laughs> my cheeseburgers, they're technically macarons, but 
my macarons tend to look a bit like cheeseburgers. <laughs> They're puffy like cheeseburgers. I should probably change that. I should probably stop making such a prominent dome on them. I just thought it was a much cuter look. When things are smaller and fatter, they're just cuter, aren't they? It's just, it's the way it works, at least to me. I want to bring in some yellows into this area. So, I don't know if I want to do the skulls yellow. I want these to be probably Ralphified, so these are going to be gold. Ralph is my, where is he? Ralph, if you are new to my channel, Ralph is a fixture here on my channel. Ralph is a gold skull. I have Ralph stickers. I have several iterations of Ralph. I have a large Ralph. Ralph is the name of the spirit that embodies my golden skull. So I have a big Ralph, I have a small Ralph, and I have Ralph stickers, and Ralph makes regular appearances in my artwork. Are we going to do all of these, that pistachio minty green? Is that what we're gonna do? Is that what we're gonna do? I don't know. When I find myself getting stuck, in choosing a color in a certain area that's when I will take the cue to jump over to another area and start applying color because once I start seeing the bigger picture then I can get a better feel for where I want the color placement so we're gonna jump over here and work on our hair If you are curious about the colors that I am using, I never know. At one point early on in my channel, there was somebody who requested that I call out all of the, this was way back in the day when I used colored pencils. I had somebody request that I put down the names of the pencils and the colors that I was using and all of that. And I don't believe that person watches my channel any longer. So I stopped doing it because really I was just doing it for her. But I know that a few people appreciated it and they would use the same colors. But I never know how to feel about doing that these days because <laughs> the way that I work and some of my color choices, for some people they're really fun and they're a means of breaking away from the conventions of traditional coloring. But <laughs> using these color choices will inevitably lead to anxiety for some people, I know, because they're going to be using colors that are hideous and it's going to be uncomfortable. Some people enjoy being uncomfortable. I love being uncomfortable in my creative practice because that's when I learn more, that's when I grow, that's when I reach artistic revelations, if you will. So I never know if people actually care about the color names, whatever tools I'm using. I always list the art supplies down below and that seems to be good enough, but if anybody wants specifics, the Prismacolor markers that I'm using today, this one is Flagstone Red. It is number PM73. I don't know if the numbers are still correct because over time Prismacolor discontinues certain products, but PM73 is Flagstone Red, PM65 is Sienna Brown, PM166 is True Green, and then this yellow is just basically a highlighter yellow. So any highlighter yellow. And then the Cali Art marker is called Vermilion. And it is R107. Be uncomfortable. Be uncomfortable in your coloring from time to time. Don't be one of these strict, staunch adults who insists that their adult coloring book needs to be a masterpiece because guess what? You're an adult coloring in a coloring book. A coloring book. A friggin' coloring book. There's nothing adult about coloring in a coloring book. At least there shouldn't be in my opinion.
on the subject of coloring books, I posted on my Instagram, not a sneak peek of the artwork, but I posted a quick announcement that my next coloring book, and I posted it, sneaky sneaky snake, in my stories, so it disappeared in 24 hours, that my new coloring book is complete. It's not for sale yet. I still have not received the proof copy. The proof copy will be arriving in my claws this week. But I posted just an announcement. I did share the cover line art over on my Patreon. If I have any patrons watching this video, you guys saw the line art. And you saw the color palette for the coloring book cover, but you did not see the actual cover yet. Now, by the time this video is up, I may have already shared the image of the official completed cover over on Patreon. I don't know. But as of this moment, while I'm sitting down to film, I only shared the line art for the cover. The book is indeed Spooklets Volume 2. But what I didn't mention is that it is a themed spooklet coloring book. So it is going to be, of course, my lovely spooklets, but there's a theme to this book. And I will say nothing beyond, nothing more beyond that it is going to be kind of my traditional Halloween in July kind of a situation. As the weather heats up out here in desert land, I find myself starting to crave the fall right in the middle of July. And so I thought it would be cute if I celebrated my Halloween in July by releasing a Spooklets coloring book. I had been debating if I wanted to hang on to it a little bit and release it in August so that it could end up being a proper fall release. And I said, nope, to hell with it. There are people who celebrate Christmas in July. Christmas isn't really my thing. It's cute. I love twinkly lights. I love, you know, I, I love a theme. I love a theme. But Halloween. Halloween is my friend. So I thought, okay, for my Halloweeners out there, We will enjoy a nice spooky Halloween. I think I'm going to fill this in with, say it with me, say it with me. I want to fill this in with what pen? I'll give you a hint. It is a gel pen. It is my favorite gel pen. It is my lover. Ready? Say it in three, two, one. If you said the glaze pen, you are correct. So I think I'm going to fill that in with the black glaze, the top here with the black glaze, and let's go ahead and move on over to the, but I want these to be gold. See, that this is why working with ugly colors is a fantastic game, because it forces you to think harder than you normally would. You have to go through all of these fun, mind you, fun mental gymnastics, trying to dream up machinations in your brain on how to make these colors work as best they can and not allow them to get away from you because you do definitely run that risk. So I'm going to tell you again, I'm going to be your relatively friendly mama bird, mama harpy, shall we say, and I'm going to push your little behind out of the nest and tell you to play with ugly colors. Now, 
I will be nice in this regard. I will say choose ugly colors, but this time, sometimes I encourage you to use materials that you are uncomfortable with, but this time I'm going to encourage you to use supplies that you are comfortable with so that you at least have that going for you. So you already go in with one element of comfort, but take it one step further and go with nasty colors. Just do it, do it, do it, do it. Okay, the macarons on the cover are purple and yellow and orange. <clears throat> I think I want to stick with an all green. Yeah, that sounds boring though. Um, the struggle. Well, I did pull out that brown and we haven't used it, so. Some chocolate macarons, chocolate and mint macarons, I suppose this is. I left the filling blank because I thought that I was going to perhaps put in a different color and I suppose I should have I should have um, oh well I should have left the chocolate one the same so that I could have filled it in as well but that's okay there's no crying and coloring over here I make bad decisions on a regular when it comes to my coloring and it's okay it's fine Coloring is my time to play. As someone who spends a lot of time illustrating, not only the books, but making other illustrations, there's not a lot of room for error and experimentation. There is, I mean, that's what sketchbooks are for. But when it comes to the completed pieces, I, I go in more or less with a plan of attack, if you will, and there's no room for this kind of experimentation. So my books, for me, are definitely the place that I can go in and just make something fun and disgusting. <laughs> and sometimes it works. Sometimes it ends up working. Not always. But it's surprising how often working with ugly colors can work. Sparkle pop in gold, glaze pen in black. You are unfamiliar with the glaze pen over the years upon my discovery of this pen I've slowly begun to form a bit of a cult around this pen if I have introduced you to this pen you're welcome it is glorious it's just your typical run-of-the-mill black gel pen but is it really run of the mill no it is not it is not because it is a super juicy black deep deep black that dries to a high gloss finish which i love the portion of the video where I need to turn on the air conditioner and given that it is 
a quite noisy air conditioner. You can likely hear it in this video. I will attempt to do a little bit of editing of the audio as best I can on my video editing program, but it clearly will not be miraculous, but I'll try. Um, having said all that, I know how annoying it is to hear background noise. I am aware of it, and I will be keeping this segment brief. So off camera, I did fill in the golden skulls, and now I'm going to do a little bit of the makeup, and then I think I'll probably end this egg segment. I'm gonna keep it brief, Again, the noise, it, it's annoying, I know. So, I want to bring some of that green. Now, I don't know why this color is called true green because, oop, 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 look what I did with the chisel. I went out of the lines a little bit. Oh my God, what a crime. She went out of the lines. Oh, now my whole page is destroyed. We'll make it work. So this color is called True Green. Is this what people, now okay, perhaps my eyes are calibrated incorrectly, but is this what people think of when they think of green? I don't, I just always assumed that green, just when people think of a standard green, that they think of, here, my fake plants will demonstrate. That's green, right? My sunglasses. <laughs> That's more of an emerald green to me. But why is this? I don't, whatever. My brain, it never stops. So there, we brought some of that color into the makeup and then I'm going to also pull it into her outfit. Some stripe action. And should we also put the green in the mesh of her dress, blouse, whatever it is? We'll do a little of this. And then I'm going to have to use it sparingly because this marker is finally dying. Her lips, black lips or green? I quite like the look of uh, little pouty brat lips. So let's give her black pouty brat lips. And we'll deal with the proper highlighting of it later. Let's give her black eyeliner, of course. You know, I don't think that there has been a day that I have gone out in public without wearing eyeliner, cat eyeliner to be specific. I don't do a lot of uh, makeup. I don't do a lot of fancy eyeshadows and that kind of thing. It's not, makeup isn't my thing. Makeup is cute, makeup is fun, but it's just not, it doesn't interest me, right? Not like that. I like seeing it on other people, but for me personally, I am just not a makeup person. I've tried to like it and I just, I don't, it doesn't suit me and I just don't enjoy doing it. So even if I walk outside putting, now I do fill in my eyebrows of course. When I say I'm not into makeup, that doesn't mean that I don't wear 
any because I clearly do. Um, eyeliner, hi, but I fill in my brows, I put in, or I put on eyeliner and mascara, fake lashes usually as well, and that's pretty much all I need. I love lipstick, so lipstick, I can go outside without lipstick on. I, I need lip balm. I need something on my mouth, but if people took away all of my eyeshadows, everything, I would be perfectly happy with just eyeliner and mascara. But it's just crazy to think that my entire life, my entire life, well, my entire adult life since I've been putting on makeup, that I'd, I've never gone out without cat eyeliner. Kind of, I don't know. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't know. My hair has changed over the years, but my hair has always been two-tone. It was always black and blonde, black and platinum blonde bangs. And then every once in a while it was black and purple, um, black and magenta, but it's always been two-tone. The length has changed, but I don't know. Let me know. Are you guys like that? Do you guys have certain aesthetic choices that you stick religiously to? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. I don't know what color I want to make her earrings. I wanted to do them yellow, but I think I'm, I'm going to lean to the gold. I'm going to do gold earrings and then I do want to put some of that grotesque highlighter yellow somewhere on her skin as well to act as maybe a type of highlight perhaps. I don't know but I definitely want to do that. Okay, that's going to take me a while to fill in those and again the noise. I'm trying to <laughs> minimize your exposure to the noise. So let's do that, and then for the ruffle, let's go ahead and do the ruffle. Well, if her face is going to be bright yellow, maybe that's not the smartest choice. Let's give her black cheekies as well. Black cheeky spots. She's resembling a clown, and I am... Loving it. To anyone suffering from colorophobia out there, or anyone who pretends to hate clowns because it's trendy to hate clowns, I'm sorry to tell you that I love clowns. I have several vintage paper mache clowns in my apartment. I have a vintage porcelain clown, and I have a large and large-ish and rather disturbing to some people portrait of a clown that I thrifted many years ago and he's my buddy. Do you want to see him? He's in my bedroom. I won't take you in my bedroom, but do you want to see him? Uh, no, I'm not going to go get him. Well, let me know if you want to see him and I'll post a, a photo. Okay. I'm going to call it quits here for now, at least the filming portion, and I'm going to put some yellow on her face, like so, just to add some color to make this a little bit more accentuated, a little bit more highlighted, and I will see you in the next segment. This page is going by fairly quickly at this point, uh, possibly because I haven't delved into adding any accents or other gel pens, but as of now, it feels like we are moving quite swiftly. So that's good. All right, I'm going to shut my mouth and I will see you in a bit. Hello, hello, we are back, of course. I shouldn't 
even be inserting an introduction because you had no idea that I was gone for two days. Well, not gone, but I mean, I had not colored in this book for two days. And I wasn't planning on it today either, to be honest. But, 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 I have my appointment for my second Pokey Poke today. And from what I understand, I'm going to be going through it for the next couple of days. Fever, the works. So, uh, I figured, let me sit down, finish this page now. Yes, the air conditioner is on. It is 119 degrees outside today. I need the AC. If I can edit out the sound, I will. If not, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm sure you accept it, right? You don't want me to suffer, do you? And if you do, get the hell out of here. You're mean. <laughs> okay, so let's finish this. Since the last time that I worked on this, let me go over really quick what I did off camera. So I went through with the Jelly Roll Moonlight pens, which I like and I use quite frequently. I used those as a bit of a highlight. I am going to go through with the white and add the highlights as well, but just, I'm becoming more accustomed to using the monochrome highlights because I tend to overkill my white highlight. Now, in some instances, I love going full-blown, over-the-top, white, sparkle, glitter, highlight everywhere. I love it. But in some instances, my brain does not want to do that. It wants a little bit more contrast. And so that's why today we are going with monochrome highlights, and then we are also going to be adding in the white in a few areas. So I went through with the Jelly Roll Moonlight on the macarons, and then I went through and I put some on the hair. I think it looks especially nice on the hair. That flagstone red, that muted brick red, and then this lilac-y lavender. It's more of a lavender, truthfully. This lavender on top, just, I love that. It's, it's almost a natural looking highlight. It's weird, I like it. Not that the highlight is weird, it's just weird how it worked out, you know? Purple with flagstone red, you wouldn't think that would work, but it does. My poison of choice today, Earl Grey tea. I have not had coffee in three days. Not much of an accomplishment. I've gone weeks without coffee. I think the longest I've gone without having a single sip of coffee is about two and a half weeks. So, <laughs> this isn't a feat of willpower. It's just, it's been hot. And when it's hot, I don't want to further dehydrate myself with black coffee. I would rather drink tea, juice, specifically grapefruit juice. I love grapefruit juice and um, orange juice, <laughs> extra pulpy orange juice. Okay, talking too much and not a single highlight has been put down. Okay, so I'm going to be highlighting, I'm going to be using the white Posca pen. Highlighting the fabric. I'm going to just assume that this is some sort of chiffon fabric. Every time that I use a or that I illustrate a translucent sort of fabric like this. We'll just assume it's chiffon. And I'm just going to highlight in a few areas here just to make it clear that this is a translucent fabric with a little bit of a sheen to it as chiffon tends to have in most cases. So we'll do like this. Not a whole lot, just um, a few lines here and there. And then perhaps we'll want this to be, because welcome to my life, a sparkle chiffon. Have you guys seen that fabric, by the way? 
Oh my god, it is a beautiful chiffon glittery fabric. It's not a tulle fabric. You know, tulle is the rougher, um, sturdier, thicker mesh fabric. I'm talking about soft, lovely, negligee chiffon material. Oh my god, they have made... I don't know when this popped up on the market, but fun fact, I have, I have no desire to be married. I have no, I've, I'm not opposed to the idea. I'm not, you know, marriage is awful and if you do it, you suck. No, no, no. You know, marriage is an institution. It's bad. I don't care. People get married for different reasons, and I am not opposed to it at all. I just, it's never been something that I've aspired to. I've never, you know, I just, I, I'm neutral about it. Um, but I love perusing ball gowns and prom dresses, special event dresses, so I spend time looking at wedding dress designer websites. Not necessarily the boutiques that sell them, because some of their pictures are just, their dresses look like, you know, $2.99 throwaways from the thrift shop, but wedding dress designers, like proper wedding dress designer websites, and they use this incredibly beautiful glittery chiffon. It is so tacky and classy at the same time. I don't even know how to describe it to you, but it is gorgeous. And it just justified all of the years that I've been drawing this chiffon fabric and adding unnecessary highlights to it because I thought, aha, it exists. I'm not crazy. There are other people in this world who love and appreciate sparkly chiffon. Because it actually exists. It's a thing. Because typically tool was the only type of fabric that I was aware of that could be sparkled up and nobody likes tool. Tool sucks. I enjoy wearing tool because it puffs up my dresses and my giant shoulder pads because you know I love a shoulder pad but chiffon is so much more wearable. I don't know if I have any fashion designers or people who can sew in my audience, but you're probably all nodding your head right now going, yes, I know exactly what fabric you're speaking about. I don't often talk at length about fashion and fabric on my channel. You're welcome for that. <laughs> but if you enjoy fashion, well, I hope you enjoy my little occasional rants about fashion and perfume. Because I love clothes. I love clothes. We are, of course, going to sparkle up her hat. This isn't necessarily a beret at this point, right? It's more of one of those dish-shaped 1940s, 1960s vintage style hats. Cute. nothing too crazy that's it we're gonna leave the highlights fairly subtle and then of course we are going to come down and do the rest anywhere that there is black glaze or at least in most areas where I applied the black glaze I will be giving her a couple of touches of this glitter it's not necessarily glitter it's just sparkle uh, what inspired me to begin sparkling up the black glaze when I use it, and by extension, I mean any 
large application of black like this where they're just large swaths of black. I was attempting to emulate the way that all of my black sequins sparkle. I have a decent number of black sequined blouses and skirts and dresses and things and then I wear uh, if you've been with me for a while you know some of my favorite accessories are vintage glass beaded necklaces the, the heavy black glass necklaces and those are just solid black glass and they sparkle beautifully in the light and they just have like a, a subtle white sparkle beautiful and that was the inspiration to do this style of highlighting so it's not a frivolous arbitrary choice as most of my artwork typically is it's more of a let me try to replicate my own personal wardrobe in a way I always infuse a little bit of myself into my girls if you if you haven't already noticed, what, which I'm sure you have, huge eyelashes, the eyeliner, the puffy clothes, you know. Okay, my coloring fiends, we are done. And you know what? <laughs> I thought I was really doing something with this page. I thought, oh, we're going to play with ugly colors and it's going to be fun and like blah, blah, blah. I'm going to challenge myself this and I'm going to blah 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 that <laughs> mm. I was looking at her for a second just you know that final look to make sure she's complete and if I can sign off on the page and move on and it occurred to me that my brain forms connections when I don't even realize it which I, we all we all know that our brains do that but I have played with similar color palettes in other books and here I am thinking we're doing something new. No, nay, check this out. So this is Retro Deco, one of my favorite coloring books, by the way. But here's Retro Deco, and here's this page. Not quite the same. Maybe this is not the best example, but essentially it's golds, greens, and reds, right? Gold, greens, and reds. And in this same book, golds, oranges, you know, orange, green, red, and yellow. Basically the same. <laughs> but here's the thing. When I created this page, when I colored this one, I went into this fully hating this color palette, and then I think the end result was super cool. I think there's this retro look to her that just, I love the colors. I love the way they interact here. So I don't know why, from this page, when I pulled out similar colors, for this one, I thought they looked so hideous. They ended up working out, right? I think they look good, but we're, we're gonna have to try this, this, no, they're not identical, okay? But they're similar. Where did she go? Similar-ish. So we're gonna have to try this ugly color experiment again. I think the most successful ugly coloring experiment to date was again in Retro Deco, and it was this one. These colors just are nasty together, but they look great. I made them work, and this was a fun page. This was a true test of making discordant color palettes work. This one was almost a little bit too successful in the end. Now, this is where I wonder, am I attributing the success to the colors inherently working well, or is this the machinations of my brain that problem solve in a way that make the end result successful? That's food for thought. I don't know. Is this a testament to my problem solving or to the color palette? I have no idea. Because has I, had I treated the colors in a different way, this page may not have looked good, right? So, I do like this page. Is she one of my favorites? Um, I don't know, but it's definitely not a page that I dislike. So, 
hooray for that because it's rare that I say that but uh, it's just it was fine it was a fun page it was painless by the way this one I feel went by much quicker than most and I hope that you enjoyed watching it I hope that you tried the little experiment for yourself if you haven't done so before and if you have try it again enjoy yourself this book is available as the printed version on Amazon and then if you prefer the PDF version that version is available via my Etsy shop. Links to everything will be down below. Links to the book, links to the art supplies. And as always, remember that my website is really the only link that you need because on that website you can find links to everywhere that you can find me online. Thank you once again for watching. I am terrified. I'm going out the door in a couple of hours to get my pokey poke, so I'm going to take off well, actually, I'm going to clean up the apartment a little bit because I know I'm going to be indisposed for a couple of days. So I'm going to clean up a little bit and then we're going to go get a pokey poke and probably going to be no artwork for a couple of days. But I will see you guys in the next video. I hope that you enjoyed this book or this video. I hope that you like the book too, by the way. And let me know what you think down below. If you watched this video and you enjoyed it, what emoji... Should we leave an emoji today? Leave me. What can you leave me? Leave me a skull and a black heart. If you have a black heart emoji on your phone. If you don't, leave me a skull and a yellow heart. Okay. That's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.